pleasure of participating in this conference one year ago. Of course, a lot has changed. Uh, most notably, we announced that we had entered into a $670 million license agreement with Roche and Genentech for our lead program. So I look forward to providing you with this update. Uh, as a publicly traded company on a U.S. exchange, I refer everyone first to our safe harbor clause in case I make any forward-looking statements today. Uh, I do intend to be very brief with the presentation and just provide the, the highest points from our uh, deck, but thank you for uh, being interested in our presentation today. As Gilbert indicated, our approach is to manufacture specific cell types of the body and then we transplant those cell types directly to the body as the medicine. I can almost jokingly talk about this as if it were providing replacement parts for the body. Uh, the company is well capitalized. Uh, we have uh, approximately 200 million in market capitalization and our approach can be applicable to a number of different indications which I will share with you today. The basic technology is that we begin with pluripotent stem cells, which have the incredible ability to become any of the 200 cell types in the human body. We grow these pluripotent stem cells into tremendous numbers, many billions of cells, and then we put them through our proprietary process in order to convert them into specific cell types pure populations of specific cell types, which we want, uh, then those cells, those differentiated cells become the medicine. So I wish to be clear that we never utilize an undifferentiated stem cell in the human body. We always convert an undifferentiated cell into a specific functional cell before administering it to a patient. The five programs that we have are shown here. Three of them are already in the clinic. I will touch on each of them briefly today. The manufacturing of the cells is done at one of our two GMP facilities. We have approximately 50 employees that are dedicated to this facility, which is located in Israel. And pluripotent stem cells have this wonderful property that they can become any cell in the human body. We currently are focused in the cells shown and highlighted here in orange, but as we grow and become successful further, we may be able to go into additional areas if we wish. The lead program is called Oprigen. It is an RPE cell transplant to treat one of the leading causes of blindness. This is the deal that we entered into with Roche and Genentech. We received 50 million US for an upfront payment with an additional $620 million in potential milestones. Genentech will be directing and funding all clinical development and commercialization of this program. We are currently the manufacturer and we provide additional support. The approach here is to address this terrible condition which robs people of their vision. There is a wound in the back of the eye which grows larger as cells die off. We replace those cells. We manufacture and replace those cells. A image of, of what this looks like comparing pre-transplant with post-transplant is shown here. The RPE cells degenerate typically with age. And if you can manufacture and transplant safely new RPE cells, you can rescue vision and stop this disease. A remarkable finding from our clinical trial, which has been repeated five times, is that we were able to place our cells right across the area of atrophy in the eye. And after doing so, we were able to show that the area of atrophy after one year had either not changed or become smaller. That is an incredible finding because human beings lack the ability to naturally regrow retinal tissue. Our cells were transplanted, integrated, and stably remained within the patients for many years. We have no cases of rejection of our cells and these patients on average gained 
almost 13 letters of visual improvement at one year. So not only did the area of atrophy get smaller instead of continuing to grow, but the patients could see better. I will just mention that this is an example that you could see these changes in as little as three months. We've, we've colored it in so you can see the area of damage. It can become smaller. This is just one aerial image. We, of course, take dozens and dozens of cross sections using high resolution OCT imaging in order to see. This is just a summary to give you an example of how profound. Again, this cannot happen naturally. It comes from our intervention. We are prepared to satisfy the commercial opportunity because we have moved our production into three-dimensional bioreactors. We can manufacture many billions of cells in a bioreactor. We do this without any sort of gene editing. We have a thaw and inject allogeneic formulation of this product, which can already generate thousands of clinical courses at this small scale. And of course, it is straightforward to go into larger bioreactors. Uh, I, won't, I won't hit on these points only to say at the bottom of this slide that our belief is that in certain settings, using an entire cell may be better than a small molecule. And we believe that the data that we have generated in the setting of dry AMD is a wonderful example of the power of a cell being greater than an antibody or a small molecule in certain settings. We are also clinically testing a similar product in the setting of spinal cord injury. Uh, people like this young man who was on our clinical trial uh, often are robbed of their ability to move. Uh, he needs mobility. He needs upper extremity mobility in his arms and his, and his wrists in order to maneuver his wheelchair and to drink from his uh, bottle of, of uh, uh, water there gaining or regaining that motion, that mobility in the upper extremities is critical to independence and quality of life. And we do that by manufacturing and transplanting oligodendrocyte progenitor cells. These cells fill the cavity, which forms after an injury, and they support the surrounding tissues, and they provide a myelin sheath for neurons to benefit from and reestablish neuronal connectivity. In the clinical study of 25 patients with cervical injuries, 96% of our patients improved, meaning they gained mobility during the observation period, and a full 32% of them gained two levels, which is really an exceptionally high amount of improvement for patients with these severe spinal cord injuries. To give you an example, that would be equivalent to moving a patient from a cervical level four to a cervical level six uh, injury. That's a grade or a description of the injury. And you can see that moving them from almost 24 hour care to just a few hours of housework uh, as a support is an, an incredibly significant cost savings and higher quality of life. And we have patients who did move from C4 to C6. We also did this with a wonderful safety profile. There were a total of 534 adverse events in this trial, but only one of them was possibly related to our cells and it auto-resolved. It was a grade two dysthesia. So we never had any rejection of these cells and we have data now going as far as 10 years in some of the earliest treated patients. We also have greatly improved upon the manufacturing quality and purity. The original material uh, shown in blue with some measurements of impurity has been improved. We use a new process now and that is shown in orange and you can see these significant reductions in the purity levels of our material and we will be bringing this back into the clinic. So overall, really exciting clinical results by utilizing and transplanting oligodendrocytes into patients with spinal cord injuries. We recently initiated a new program to address the loss of hearing. We are manufacturing auditory neurons to treat hearing. This program did not exist one year ago at Lineage. We just thawed some cells 
and started working to manufacture auditory neurons. And we actually are going to go into animal testing around the end of this year. So that is a striking example of how quickly a company can identify a target cell type, manufacture those cells and get into animal testing to support an IND. And we have done that with less than 1 million US dollars of investment. We have another program. We have a fourth program that is neuronally derived and that's photoreceptors. So this is another program of blindness. These are the rods and cones that are often associated with uh, retinitis pigmentosa. This program is not part of our deal with Roche and Genentech. This is a separate deal which we own and control. And we're very excited about our ability to generate new intellectual property. And we have already begun preclinical studies with this program. The fifth and final program that I will mention is called VAC. This is a manufacturing, this is the manufacture of dendritic cells and loading specific antigens into dendritic cells in order to present those antigens to the body so that your body knows how to fight the cancer or the tumor, which is trying to evade that, that immunological uh, response. We have the ability to manufacture many millions uh, of uh, billions actually of dendritic cells, and we can load them with different tumor associated antigens in order to drive a very high level of immune response. And it's each product is associated with the antigen. So the dendritic cell is not the drug here. The dendritic cell is the carrier of the antigen. So each antigen is the drug and you could have tumor antigens, you could have infectious disease antigens. So this one program actually offers the possibility of many different product profiles. So to sum up, uh, Lineage is a company with several clinical stage programs in cell therapy or more specifically cell transplantation. We control our own manufacturing. We have one of the largest uh, patent estates in cell therapy. We have validating corporate partnerships. In fact, I believe our Roche and Genentech Alliance is the largest cell therapy deal that's been signed outside of cancer. So we're very proud because we aim to be a leader and a very significant company in the field of regenerative medicine. So I thank you very much, Gilbert, for, uh, for the opportunity to speak, and I'd be happy to uh, take any questions that may have arisen. Thank you, Brian. So we have collected a few questions from the uh, investors uh, before today. So there's a few ones I'd like to address to you. The first one being, uh, he's asking, uh, is it possible to expand your development work in the Asian markets? We actually, so the answer is yes. Uh, we actually have a subsidiary in Singapore uh, called ESI Bio. Um, yeah, there, there is no reason that I'm aware of that our programs could not be applicable to patients because all the, everything that we do is allogeneic. So we do not take cells from a patient and manipulate them and put them back. We have a single cell line and that cell line converts into specific cell types, which we believe could be used by anyone regardless of what their underlying genome or, or phenotype is. So that's very exciting. But I should explain that one of the reasons why it is so widely applicable is that your eye does not have a lot of immune cells in it. The eye is very tolerant of foreign material. So we have patients that spend about three months on immunosuppression, but then we take the immunosuppression away. And I will repeat that we have never had a case of cells being rejected from either our spinal cord or our dry AMD programs. So another question is uh, us asking, which of your product candidates do you think have the most potential? The technology is broadly applicable. So it, it, is, it is a difficult situation because I think that giving someone the ability to, giving someone mobility, literally the ability to, to raise your arms up when you were otherwise unable to move them is an extraordinary improvement in quality of life. But the number of patients that have spinal cord injuries is much smaller than the number of patients that have problems of, of blindness. So it would be difficult for me to measure. 
But what I can say is that the dry AMD program is very interesting because there are two forms of dry AMD, wet and dry. There currently are therapies for wet AMD selling above $10 billion around the world, but there is nothing approved for dry AMD. And more people, eight times more people have dry AMD than wet AMD. So the AMD market opportunity might be extraordinarily large and, and in fact, larger than everything else that we're doing put together. Okay, the next question. What do you think ultimately Oprogen will be worth if all things are being successful at the end? If all things are successful, many billions of dollars because of what I just mentioned, that, that wet AMD has proven to be uh, tolerant of, of many billions of dollars of sales already. And there are more people with, with dry AMD. So I, I think if that product gets approved and has a product profile that matches what we have seen so far, I think it can be incredibly successful. Great. Uh, the last question for you here, your company share price seems to come down a bit uh, corrected a bit this year. What will be the major driving forces for Lineage to the, in the upcoming 12, 18 months uh, to be there on the uptrend again? I would say that it is very difficult to find a biotech company whose share price did not come down in the most recent 12 months. So um, it is not, uh, we are in very good company, uh, but I think that the bear market, the bad biotech market has been with us for over a year and a half, getting close to two years. And I think there will be a recovery. So my job in order to help shareholders benefit is to ensure that Lineage is well prepared and well capitalized to be one of the more successful companies when capital begins to return to the sector. And I hope we are beginning to see some signs of that even today. Great, uh, thank you for addressing all the questions, Brian. Thank you for being with us here today. It is my pleasure, Gilbert. Thank you for the opportunity.